Hello, welcome to our weekly Always Shine Your Light Equine Energy Point Education Series webinar. My name is Kay Aubrey Shemaine. I am the owner and director of Grand Adventures Ranch, a holistic equine wellness center in Sonoida, Arizona. And tonight we're going to talk a little bit about caring for your photopuncture equipment. Um, many, most of us use a system that we've purchased in the last 20 years. Uh, might be called a Bioscan system, a Summerell system, an Avalon system, or an InLight wellness system. It's been manufactured under different names, but it's all the same system. It consists of two different pieces of equipment, plus, for, for many people, a, a pole therapy cap or what we call the happy hat that goes over the head. So the system comes with both a scanner that scans the body and tells us exactly where there's energy out of balance or where there is a, a, a blocked energy point, acupuncture point, or where we have heat and inflammation. So it'll locate those problem areas on the body for us. And then this particular system we use two different cluster heads of infrared and visible red light to bring that energy back into balance. That's just an overview of the system. The systems are pretty heartily made, but that being said, you've paid, some, some people have paid 5,000, some people have paid 14,000, you know, the price has changed over the years, for their system, and that's quite a significant investment in the equipment. And so we want to just go through some simple precautions to help it last for over a decade. I bought my current oldest system in 1997, and it's still in great shape and doing work today. So just as an overview, first use a really good heavy duty carrying case. Uh, it's usually sold with one. Some people have gotten different parts at different times. However, they don't necessarily put them in the big cases. I highly recommend that if you don't have one, you invest in one. You can ship it, you can not worry about dropping it, getting it kicked, that sort of stuff. Store your system correctly, we're going to go into that. Be aware of where you have it and where you put it when you're working through a therapy session. Keep it clean, keep your system charged, keep it in a safe place, and then if you're traveling, use an approved lock. So, the carrying case, all right? A lot of people don't like to have a big heavy carrying case because it's heavy, but I'll tell you, I can't, it has saved my butt so many times when things have been moved around, something falls, I've seen them fall out of the back of a truck, I've seen them fall off of shelves, nothing happens to the system when they're in these big camera cases. These cases also come with a really good La, uh, hole in it to where you can put a lock through and lock it and keep uh, people out. When you store your system, now the case that comes with it now has a space in the in the uh, lid for your pole therapy cap. Keeps it nice and flat and safe. The older systems may not have that, but they usually still had space that you could put your pole therapy cap on top. We'll go into storing those if you don't have a case in one of our next sessions. Notice here though that we we haven't just shoved our equipment back in the case willy-nilly. The cords and so on are pretty darn durable. They're, they're made from guitar uh, cords, but if the cords are left plugged into the cluster heads or into the wand and something is out of position and pressure is put on it, it can crack the wand or crack the connector into the cluster heads. So we usually take them off, lay them flat, okay? Also, there's holes in the foam. We put our crayons, our other scanning tops, the probes in there to keep them from rolling around. We use a, a big sponge, and there happens to be a nice little spot that we tuck that, and of course our charger and so on. But keep it all flat. Make sure when you close the case, that no cords are sticking out. That's a big one. When the cords are flopping around, if you're in a hurry, it's real expensive if you have to go and replace those cords because you cut it off with a lid. Be aware of where you put your system. 
when you're, you know, if you're at a, at a big barn, um, you're around a lot of different horses, people, stupid drivers, don't just set your system down. Don't put it out of sight. They can get feet real easy with people who have stick, sticky fingers. Don't put it where if a horse spooks, it'll get kicked. Or if somebody's washing a horse, your system gets washed. It is electronics, so we want to take care of it. Um, all of these things, lots of dirt, dust, sweat, are they're not friends of your system. You're going to spend a lot more time cleaning if you don't keep the case closed. If you're using the scanner, keep the other piece in the case. If you're using the light therapy unit, keep the scanner in the case. Just take care of it if you can. Keeping it clean, all right? I love carrying saran wrap and little baggies with me to therapy sessions. You never know when you're going to have to treat an open wound, um, a horse that's particularly dirty, or you're working around where it could accidentally get wet. All you have to do is either stick the cluster head in a baggie or take a little saran wrap, round, wrap it around, or put the saran wrap around the wound of the horse. The light will go right through the saran wrap. It doesn't change the therapeutic quality of it at all. And if you do need to clean it, clean it without damaging it. Don't use really harsh chemicals. Um, non I like tri uh, Clean and Green from the Amazon Herb Company, which is now Trivita. I use it for everything. It's safe enough to drink. I use it to clean wounds. I use it to clean my equipment. I use it to clean the floors. I, I use it for lots of things. But um, it also works really well um, when I, when I, as a general cleaner, even on the leather, on the metal, etc. If I really want to shine up the case, I'll use some Armorol. Armorol is great stuff for that. And every once in a while it's a good idea, especially if you live down here where it's so dry, to take a leather conditioner like Lexol or something and really rub it into the carrying bags because they can dry out as well. The little bags that, that wrap around your scanner and your um, uh, light therapy unit. If you do need to clean the cluster heads, alcohol and q-tips work great. Okay, um, You can take them, work in and around all of these little diodes. Uh, if you've got one of the old style units, you can pop that little piece of glass off, clean under there, clean up the unit, put it back in. Just use some needle nose pliers to pull that little ring out. You can buy more of those rings at almost any electronics or hardware store if for some reason you lose it. Sometimes the O-ring under there will dry out. You might have to replace the O-ring after 10 or 15 years. Um, and it's pretty easy to do, but just take general care of it. Keep your unit charged. It's really annoying to grab a call. Can you come out and do my horse? You get in the truck, you run over there, and your unit won't come on. Okay, the older batteries should, could only be charged for six hours, six to eight hours, and you needed to unplug them. They were kind of like the old cell phones. If you left them plugged in too long, it wore down the battery faster. But the new ones, they could be left in as long as you want, though it's still good practice to maybe plug them in overnight and then put them back in the case. The newer the batteries are, the longer that charge will last. But even even if they're, I've had batteries that were six, eight, ten years old, and they'd hold it still. You could, charge them up and leave them in the case for a month or two and they'd be fine. Um, I, I just expect every, you know, every five to ten years I'm probably going to have to go to Batteries Plus and pick up new batteries for it. I could send it back to the company, but why? It's a whole lot less expensive to go over to Batteries Plus and, and pick up a new battery and just put it in. It's pretty straightforward. And then keep it safe. All right. I've already had one system stolen from a car, and I lived where nobody stole anything. We didn't have locks on. Nobody had ever come into my house. But I think somebody knew what I was doing. They came into my car. The only thing they took was my massage chair and my, my uh, therapy unit. So they had been watching me and knew what I had. But these systems are worth a lot of money. So don't just leave them in plain view. Throw a towel or something over them. And then at night, bring them into the house. Check and see if your automotive insurance covers them if they get stolen. Just be aware because they are pretty valuable. And I was very fortunate. My homeowner's insurance covered it. I got a brand new one. I was good to go. But it doesn't always work like that. And put your name on it. Okay. Um, I take off the leather pouch. 
put the name right there on the back of the unit because if somebody steals it, they very likely don't take the leather pouch off. And so they won't know to go under and remove it. And if you see somebody all of a sudden selling your system on, on eBay, well, then you've got a way to prove that it's yours besides trying to find the hard to locate serial number. So we recommend just taking one of those permanent uh, pens in gold or silver and, and writing your pertinent details on the back. So that's it. That's how to care for your system. I'm sure there's things I've missed, and if you have any great ideas, put them on the Facebook page or give me a call. All right, we're going to open this up for everybody now. I'm going to unmute. Okay, anybody? Feedback? Well, I can tell you that you got to be careful about unplugging um, the the things that plug into your units because I had one break and it was very difficult to find what, something to replace it. And what broke? Um, on the bottom, my is mine is an older one. I bought it from Dan Summerell, and on the bottom where the battery plugs in, it ran from the battery to the machine itself. Oh, right, right, right. And, and the, yeah, in the bottom of the machine, the plug was made so that it was straight forward. And when I sat it down or dropped it, it broke the whole, um, what do you call it, the, the plastic and the middle. Is that is that like what's on this, on this uh, cluster head on the right, but it was what went into the machine? Yeah, yeah. yeah it broke the connector. That's one of the reasons. But it broke the whole thing. Yeah, that's one of and the reasons they got the other end. The yeah. Yeah. The new and it was very difficult to find. I, we did finally go to Radio Shack. My son is an electrician and he figured out how to make it work. But the new connector that I purchased is is curved. It's an L. Right. So now if I accidentally drop it, it won't break like yeah, that. Yeah, that's one of the reasons they did that was because pe there were there were cases of people, you know, accidentally crunching it. And, and, and that having to replace just that cluster head is a couple hundred dollars. So, yeah, yeah, yeah no, I, I get it. That's why we're always like being, you know, being really... Well, it's not only, it's not only the money that, it, that um, it, you know, it's difficult to find the places to go to replace it. Right, right. Well, because now, nobody's I, making I that one anymore, right? They don't make that cluster head anymore. I, I don't know that that's true because there is a company called Mauser Electronics, and I got online, and I did find that. It was after I had um, oh. repaired it, but I'm going to order a couple of extra ones. It Was that just the casing, or was that the lights inside? No, it was, see, I didn't, it wasn't the head itself. It was just the, the base, right. Yeah, it was, um, it went from, I don't know how to explain it. It, it this was the, the cord that connected from, I have a large battery that went in a little pocket on the side. Right. And that battery had a cord that ran from that to the machine itself and powered it without electric. That cord is the one that broke. Yeah, so. I sent the one on the cluster. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cords are luckily easily, e more easily repaired than than the cluster head. Even if you have to. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thank goodness. And that is one of the reasons they've gone to these new cluster heads and the new heavier cords. Um, mm -hmm. Is just exactly for that to 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 take into account that horses are uh, flighty and they jump and people drop stuff and you know stuff happens. Well, not only that, if you're standing there with that thing. Um, I use it as a belt, mm -hmm. and it gets heavy. Mm-hmm. Heavy. It does. I've worn them both as bandoleros and as belts at shows mm -hmm. for hours, and and yeah, it's right. it's quite a bit. And so, but if you take it up and flop it down, you could you could regret it. So, um, any other questions or feedback? Okay, well, then fine. Let's see. I'm going to grab, let me find this picture real quick. Um, 
we had a question on the channels, the meridians that run up the inside of the front leg, okay? And uh, how to know where you're at, you know, you hope. <laughs> and oh, that's it. So here we have the, um, the inside forearm of a horse, and we have three different, we have, you know, this point up that's up at the top is what Sandra is most concerned with. She says it shows up all the time on these horses that she's doing. And yet none of the charts really document it well, okay? And that's because this horse and many horses have this muscle here. And a lot of the channels show a horse that's a lot longer between the knee and that muscle, okay? And of course, everybody's charts are a little bit different. I get it. So one of the things to think about is we have, we have three primary channels running up the inside of the front leg. And this is, this is not going to be really great, okay? But from the front to the back are sort of from, we've talked about yang and yin, and yang meridians are more exposed and outside and yin are more inside. And I want you to think about the organs that are here that are involved. We have the lung, okay? We have the pericardium, and then we have the heart. The heart is on the very inside it is the organ itself is on the very inside of the body it is surrounded by encased and protected by the pericardium and all of that is surrounded by the lung which is the most external so down this channel the heart is the most internal and toward the back the pericardium is central and the lung is the most external does that make sense Oh, nobody's popping in. But, so when you're looking at this, of course, my number. What's that? Makes sense. Okay. When you, the, the first answer I have is, if this keeps coming up and up and up, don't worry about it initially. Just treat it and clear it. But the next thing to do is, if you're not sure if this point is lung six or pericardium five and i'm going to guess pericardium five okay because it's up right in the middle of the channel okay but if you're not sure once you've become good at muscle testing once you've become familiar with the energy of the channels just muscle test for it okay put your hand on the horse and ask is this pericardium is it lung is it heart and just navigate that way okay but if you don't already muscle test if you're trying to use charts just remember that it's lung, then pericardium, then heart. Lungs on the outside, pericardium is in the middle, and the heart is at the very center of the chest. So that's that's how we look at it. Okay? That was just a quick and dirty way to look at the channels going up the front leg. Gosh, I almost want a picture of that. <laughs> I can't believe I did it that well with the with the uh, yellow highlighter. Okay. So does anybody else have any questions that have come up with scanning horses recently? Has anybody scanned a horse recently? Is anybody still here? <laughs> Hello? Well, I have, and I have... I'm I'm really perplexed because I feel that my horse has issues in his shoulders. Mm -hmm. I'm, and I'm not saying the point of the shoulder. I'm saying up closer to uh, the wither area. Okay. But I'm not getting any readings there. 
Now he has swelling. If if you ride him a little bit, he has swelling that runs from the bottom of the wither down the forearm almost to the elbow. There's a big muscle there that runs down there and that will swell. And when my farrier puts his foot up on that metal post to trim his foot, he leaves it up there for a while. It starts to tremble and the horse physically cannot hold it up there. Okay. So if it's not if I'm not getting a reading there, and I think it's well my but, guess is I'm just guessing, I think it's in the tendon where it attaches to the bone. Or the muscle. What does scanning show you? Where do points show up? I have points that run all the way up the top of the neck. I have points that are down closer to the point of the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And I have a couple of things, a couple of points that are, well actually it, there's some that run from where the wither ends along the, on the, on the side of the backbone. But I don't have anything where it is. Well, but where I that's, is. that's the problem with assuming that the problem, <laughs> that the energy flow blockage is where you think it is. Remember, horses can have energy blockages in the jaw that caused them to be lame in the hind quarters. Okay? We can have... Well, I, I, could I just make one point because uh -huh. I'm like a chicken. I'll forget what I'm thinking. Sure. Um, I had a saddle on him yesterday. I just rode him at a walk around the field a couple of times. He went with his head down. Now he's not a high-headed horse, he's a thoroughbred, and he usually goes along with his head probably at the level of his top line. But when I was riding him, his head was down almost like a quarter horse. And the longer I rode him, the faster it was like it was the pain was becoming unbearable. So I'd have to I'm I guess I have to think that the pressure of the saddle in the area that I'm talking about, um, maybe I'm wrong. And that could be where the pain is, Diane. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. That can be where the pain and where the manifesting of the issue is. But that may not be what shows up on your scanning. That's the problem with just assuming that, that the, the problem area is directly under the alert point, okay? Which is why, you know, we 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 tell people to get out of their heads, especially if you don't know the energy points. Get out of your heads about what is or is not um, causing the problem, and just start scanning and clearing and scanning and clearing. Now there are a lot of there are a lot of points that affect shoulder and front end that may not be directly there in the shoulder. It can be all the way along the neck. It can be all the way down to the, the uh, pastern joint. There's a master point for um, shoulders, okay? So don't, don't get caught up with it being specifically there. Now, you know, that's why I've encouraged you in the past, bring us a picture for the class so we can go over what we're seeing. Well, I'll have it next week. I'll make sure that I have a picture of what what I'm seeing. Okay, good, good. Because um, that'll help a lot with you know figuring out where it is and why. Okay. Um, let me see here. I'm going to show you. Sorry, I went looking for a chart that would have what I was looking for on it. 
Now this is by no means all of the master points there are on a horse, but this is this is a number of the points that the students in the glass class had to know for their for their final exam, and or at least be familiar with enough to find. Okay. Now let's rotate this one. If we can. Okay, rotate, rotate, rotate. There you go. So, for example, we could have things down here in small intestine 3 that are causing issues. We can have problems here along the splint bone that are causing issues in the shoulder. Shoulder points that show up regularly, everything along the bladder, gallbladder, stomach, down along the shoulder, point of the shoulder here. Back here is small intestine 9. This SI9, this is a huge shoulder point. But because it's behind the shoulder, a lot of people don't think of it as being having anything to do with it. When we're thinking headset and the horse trying to drop their head and get away from it, I'm often thinking bladder. I'm thinking the, the bladder 11, bladder 10. So that and releasing here in these vertebra. Uh, sometimes we have issues uh, in the hind quarters between where we have to release here the, the, for the hunter's bump, that then allows the back to come up and allows the 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 shoulder to free up. So that'll be really great if we can see the pictures, Diane. That, that'll that help us yeah. look at what's going uh, on. He does have a pronounced hunter's bump. Aha! Uh -huh. Big clue. He does, yeah. Is it torqued to one side or the other? No. It's absolutely straight down the middle of the back. I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. Okay, good. Um, do yourself a favor this week. Go out. Have somebody hold him and you stand on a box or a hay bale directly behind him and take a picture straight up his back from the point of his tail to his withers, okay, or to his ears. Okay. Take a picture and then also have someone help you check the balance on his hips. Are the ischia at the same level on both sides? In other words, If you check, is this bone at the same place as the ischia on the other side, or is the other one a little bit farther forward? Okay. Oops. Is, oh, that's good. All right. Is, if you look at the, the, the top of the height here, is this height on this side the same as the top of the ischia on the other side? Okay. Is the top of the tail the same on both sides? Okay, check and see, A, if it's torqued at all, because that torque and that um, hunter's bump and the calcification that goes on with that can have a huge effect on shoulders. And his trying to drop his back and get away from it, that's a big clue. And hunter's bump may be affected here. It may be affected here with bladder 40. Oops, I lost my a thingy here. It might be down here with, with four, bladder 40. You may affect bladder, the cutter's bump here with the gallbladder because this releases all of these joints, okay, with gallbladder 34. Um, it can even be affected by our master points here, bladder 60 and kidney 3, just inside the hock. So, you know, stop worrying that you're not seeing the alert points exactly where you think you should be. Just keep scanning and clearing the alert points you do find and watch for changes in the horse. Okay? okay we yeah. overthink this way too much. Get out of your head and just do it. It's okay. Is the horse pinchy? No. Because just in my experience with a shoulder problem, I've never seen a horse go low-headed with a shoulder problem. Normally they would go more high-headed if they had it, just in my experience. I don't know, Kay may have another idea, but I've never seen a horse drop its head with a short shoulder well, problem. I, so I, it, I, I think I keep calling it shoulder, but it's not. It's really up closer to BL11. Ah, withers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, cool. it, but it, it runs the swelling and the muscle atrophy, or I mean the muscle quivering, runs from probably BL11 to B to S19. 
S19, S19. Oh, so straight down on along here. Shoulder. Okay, yeah. so that's... There's a, that, big, there's a big muscle that runs down there, and that's where it really shows up. Well, this channel, okay, the small intestine channel comes along here. So I would definitely start clearing that channel, okay? What side is it on? Which shoulder? Both. Main, mostly the uh, left side. Has he ever had but, an injury in his right hind? Well, see, it's hard to tell. He's an ex-race horse. He was raced really hard. Um, yeah. And everybody that I talk to says, oh, his problem is in the rear. Right. But then a lot of the people I talk to, I'm not sure they know either. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's, you know, that's why it, it, instead of talking to everybody, talk to your horse. Scan him every every week if you can. Treat him every three days, three to four days, and just keep releasing it, keep releasing it, keep peeling the layers of the onion, and tracking what you find. Okay? Right. Taking pictures over time, does the shoulder shape change, documenting when his riding changes, like this thing with his head. That's really, that's really good that you notice that. A lot of people just think their horse is being, you know, bad for the day or something. Because he's good. So he's never bad. Right. He's never bad. He, um, he, he, he has his moments. He gets a little crazy, but it's just because he's feeling good. And I wish he would feel good be, because for the last four or five months, the thing about him is he's high energy when you let him go in the morning. And he jumps and he runs and he rolls on this side. Then he gets up and he rolls on that side. He hasn't rolled but one time in the last five months. Oh, so poor guy. I know. And and this this really worries me. He's not he's not out in the field limping, or he doesn't look like he he, he uh, you can't touch him and and produce pain. Mm -hmm. But there's. It's something that's really serious because he doesn't run and jump like he did. Right. Well, I want you to look at this. Here's our small intestine meridian. Runs up the outside of this leg, okay? Comes along uh, over the shoulder, like you were talking that's about. That's where it is, from the okay. elbow all the way up, yeah. And now look look at what the, the uh, um, association point is. Huh. Right there, right there at the back of your hunter's bump. Okay. So, boy, I'd be, I'd be definitely looking for those points to come up, SI9, SI11, bladder 10, all of those, okay? Right. So, um, but yeah. And do those points come up? Sorry? Are those, the, do those, are those the points that come up? Do you see any of these when you scan? That's where I, that's where I see a problem. But I don't see a point at SI13. At SI14, I, I, I see um, it, it lights up all the way up the top of the neck. Okay. Right, is right. He, at, yeah. Is he a really thin horse? He's 17 hands and he's lean. Yeah, he's, he's uh, not an easy keeper. Also, okay, okay. it could be pretty good, but he. It he, could be uh, that shoulder blade is so pronounced that because I don't think the the scanner is not going to pick up like over the bone so much. Right. Maybe that's right. what the issue is. If he's got, if he's thin and he's a thoroughbred, he might have a really pronounced scapula, and you know, scanning yeah, over that yeah, he might does. not show up. Yeah. Right, he does. But that could show up later, like Kay said, if you just clear the points that are showing up. That could show up later because I've had that happen before where, you know, you do, you have to peel the, you have to peel the layers back to you find out what the primary cause is because normally what they're presenting is not what the, co not what the problem is. That's just like the last straw. Right, right. So, um, yeah, get us the pictures for next week and I will. Uh, if you can, like one from the full sides, we see the whole horse and then the points that you find when you scan and we'll go from there. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I will do that. All right. Awesome. He's my bud. He's the kind of a horse that talks to you every time. Oh. He's out in my backyard, and every time I open the door, he he tells me that he knows I'm there, and he wants to say hello, and just a real people kind of guy. 
That's so and sweet. it always offends me about these racehorse people. This is a horse. He raced 30 times, and he won seven of them, and he was never out of the money. Wow. And when he was done, they threw him away. You know, I just, yep. I, I find that so hard. Yeah, it really is criminal. Same thing with the with the racing dogs. It's just criminal. Well, I'm in a big race area here. You know, we have um, Charlestown races. We have Delaware. We have uh, Pennsylvania. We have Baltimore, the Preakness, and there's a lot of thoroughbreds around here, and they uh, they don't always go into a good life, you know. That's for sure. Okay, well, guys, um, we've gone almost an hour, or no, for, 40 minutes, so that's good, and... Any other questions, brags, feedback? Oh, I had one. So, okay, are we get, are we gonna do like me? Are we gonna do what? Are we gonna ever do another? Um, I, I would love to do another. Um, you know, acu acupoint, acupuncture type class yes. to get better on the points and the meridians and stuff. And I, Are you going to... We've got one scheduled, and I've got to get the announcement out. I apologize since, since we, I hit the ground running since coming back from, from Hawaii, and I meant to get it done before I went. Uh, the, the... Oh, here, where are they? The plan is August 29th which is a Thursday from 6 to 7.30. We're going to go in. Oh, we're doing a webinar? Yep. Oh, okay. this Thursday. What's that? Oh, is that this Thursday? That's, That's this Thursday. Thursday. Crap, I better get that announcement out tonight. Damn. <laughs> oh, God. I just, I have been so, so overwhelmed. Um, Push it back a week. Yeah. Yeah, I should. But we're going to do, we, what the plan is, is to do one webinar a, a month of advanced training on Meridians. And it'll only be open to students, upcoming, you know, students either with a deposit on or somebody that's already been a student or somebody who pays for the webinar. And we're going to do, you know, reading yin and yang, sedation versus tonification, alarm points, supercharger points, and just keep going from there. Now, are you saying, MJ, you want to do another class where we, like a hands-on weekend web, uh, well, workshop or something? Well, no, if we can do webinars, that, that saved me a lot of travel time. Yeah, yeah that, the goal is to do webinars, and then, and then if we need to do, if, we need, if, if there's enough demand for a hands-on class, sure, we'll do one. Yeah, that, that would be awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that little piece that I did tonight on just locating the channels, we'll do more of that with each, you know, with calls. But the, but the in-depth stuff we're going to do. Oh, God, I don't know if I can. Oh, oh, I'm, just, I'm so far behind. We may, we may have to push this out another week. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, I vote for pushing it out. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> show Thursday, so I would love to. Okay. I may send out a thing that says when's the best for people. All righty. Um, and, and Diane, you had another question? No. No, I'm good. Oh, I thought you'd started to say something. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Tammy, you're awful quiet. How's your head doing? Um, it's a little better. Oh, good. It's bad as it was. Oh. Um, but I didn't do the lights because I was working last night. I didn't have them with me. So I'm doing that tonight. <laughs> oh, good. Well, let us know. I, I sent her some some uh, chart for points for migraine. We'll see if it helps at all. So. Yeah, I'm hoping. Great. Have you no. been doing any scanning? Um, I did some last week, but they were just neighbors' horses, and you know, horses they don't do nothing. They don't, a lot of points don't come up. They just stand around all day. Yep, horses that are just chronic, that have been standing around doing nothing, they will often not have much show up, that is for sure. Yeah, so it's like frustrating to me because then you're trying to show your equipment what it does and it's not doing nothing. <laughs> well, so. try opening the bladder meridian before you do that. Either energizing it with your hands or opening it with your lights. Yes, I'm doing Okay. Yeah, okay. I am doing that. Okay, good. Um, or trot him, do, do no, just a couple minutes of, of work on a long line or a, a round pen just to wake him up a little, you can do that as well. 
Not, oh, okay. not enough that they get sweaty, but enough that, you know, a couple times around where it brings the energy up. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, and that's the issue when it's really humid and some horses really like to sweat. Like mine, you know, scanning is not good. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> you know? I'll be glad. Okay, guys. Well, we're going to go ahead and, and um, we'll, we'll break, cut it down and then we will be back next week. And Diane will bring us pictures and we'll have some stuff for working with a couple of other people. So thanks for being here. All right, bye, Kay. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.